Hello. All right. Well, th oh, sorry we had the mix up, but glad you're with us today from Boston, I Massachusetts. Yeah. I got a room full here at Velma Jackson High School. Hey. We're recording this for our friends at Rosa Scott, Germantown Original High Schools, but uh, we did get a chance to look at uh, your intro video and I let them know that you know you have a diverse background going from Las Vegas to Prairie View A&M to Mississippi College to now Tufts University in Boston, uh -huh. uh, studying to become a dentist. Uh -huh. uh, and I uh, found you on your YouTube channel is how you're, how you're here with us today. Um, but we have been talking about today the different careers in the health science fields. Um, mm -hmm. So you can talk a little bit about how you got into what you're doing and your path to it. Okay, so hi everybody. So sorry for the wait. Um, my name is Ann Shell, like he said, our student Dr. Tucker. Um, I was first pre-med um, when I first got to college and I did, um, I studied biology and chemistry and then I figured that I absolutely hate physics and anything involved in physics. I didn't want any parts in and I knew you had to take physics for the MCAT. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> let me see what else is out there because physics is awful for me. Um, but I also like shadowed a bunch of doctors. Like I volunteered in the ER just trying to see what I wanted to do. Um, and then I ended up switching. I shadowed a dentist and her life was amazing. I'm like, oh, you come home at five, you, you know, you're, you're done with your day, you make a bunch of money. And that's how I kind of went towards um, dentistry. And then from there on out, like I just shadowed different dental offices and I absolutely loved it. Uh, hold on one sec. <laughs> Um, now, can, uh, before we get into the more of the health science part, one something I do want to hit on is that you did do an HBCU undergrad and then uh -huh. went to PWI grad school. So can you talk about the experience uh, and, the, uh, and what you got out of both experiences in that? Yeah, so you guys live in Jackson, so you're kind of used to being around a lot of Black people. Um, I, I'm from Vegas, and it was not it was not that like not that we didn't have like a lot of black people in vegas but it was just completely different going to an hbcu which was is kind of odd but it was just like oh my god there's so many black people and they doing they doing black stuff around here and it's just you know but like you guys kind of get to grow up around that so for me not saying that i don't have like a whole black family but it was kind of like a culture shock that everything is black and everywhere you go is black and just like kind of being in that environment but um, definitely an amazing feeling. Um, I also danced in college. So like, I know you guys know uh, JSU, like I, we were the equivalent of that, like in Texas with the Prairie View Black Foxes. So I got that whole experience and got to travel and go to different schools and different HBCUs and kind of see what that was like. Um, but I think it was nice to not have to like worry about being black or consider you know being black in other spaces and it was just kind of very and I, I guess freeing on that end uh going to pwi was a little interesting kind of what i had been used to from before but i guess had to get readjusted after um undergrad and let's see i was also there when trump was elected and you guys you know, being in Mississippi, that was a little, a little different. Um, and people walking around with their MAGA hats and you just didn't know if you're going to be under attack for something. And I think at that time there had been like a beheading in Jackson and it was just, it was a wild, a wild time. Yeah. Um, and now, and you did talk a little bit about just now about the uh, academic requirements. So if we have young people that want to get into dentistry, mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about your degrees that you got uh, at Prairie View and at Mississippi College and what you're doing now? Yeah, so um, I have an undergraduate degree, a bachelor's degree in biology with a minor in chemistry. And then I have a biomedical science master's. And then now I'm working on my doctorate, well, which is, you know, doctor of dental medicine. Um, but you don't have to major in biology to be you know, a doctor or a dentist, 
as long as you have the prerequisites, like they will make you take biology, they will make you take chemistry and a plethora of other courses. So it's just kind of, I don't wanna say like the easier route, but you don't have to do anything extra if that's already your major. Now, if you decided to like major in English, which some people do or major in something else that they like really enjoy like communications or anything else that you enjoy, it's totally fine. You would just have to take those additional biology classes, the additional chemistry classes on top of that. And I know a lot of people, I guess like back when I was growing up, it was always like, we'll go to community college for the first two years, knock out those core classes and then go to university and knock out like, you know, the classes in my major. But um, I've learned through like talking to people throughout the years and working with admissions that that's, a terrible idea if you want to go into the medical field you save money on the front end but you lose it on the back end because all the professional schools whether it's medical school dental school um like pharmacy school all these different schools want to see you have all those classes done at a university that's what somebody tells you that it's just like oh you're saving money let's go take english here but it's like no they you have to go back and take them and i know plenty of people that had to do that on the back end to get into dental school yeah and and that's a very interesting point and you know the community college route is a very good route for certain professions right absolutely yeah you're very you're you're absolutely right if you want to have any type of doctor on your name having the full university experience is something that is pretty necessary almost all the time my dad yeah. is a surgeon here in Mississippi. He's one of the very rare exceptions of somebody that did community college the first two years. Now, uh, before I get to some of the students' questions, I do want to talk a, a little bit about uh, in a dentist office, besides mm-hmm. the dentist, what other people are working there if they don't want to do the whole pay a lot of money and go to school for a long time to be a dentist. What are some other jobs in the dental field? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have There's dental assistants who you can get um, an undergraduate degree from. I mean, not undergraduate, a community college degree. You can go there for that. We have dental hygienists. Um, We have people who, it depends on like what kind of office you're working for, but like office managers who would have like a little more business experience or like dealing with insurances. Um, You would have like lab technicians. So if you're like really good with art, really good with your hands, dentistry would be great for you but also like we have people who make the stuff like I don't know if you guys follow like different dentists or like you know how everybody is getting veneers right now and everybody's kind of getting that million dollar smile or whatever that they're going out of the country for the dentist is prepping the teeth for them and like kind of getting the patient ready for them and then we do the application but the actual people who make those things are the labs they're like dental labs so they those are like the true artists um, who do incredible work. So those are also options. If you, if you like finances, if you like, if you're good with money, you figure yourself like a numbers person. Um, we definitely need people like for the books. So there, there are many different roles to the team. Yeah. And, and, and then like I just said, a dentist is not going to be for the most part, is not going to be working weekends, not going to be working late at night. It is a pretty set schedule most of the time. So if most they, of the time, yeah. I mean, obviously, you have your emergency situations and, and special situations depending on the on where you're working. Um, mm-hmm. But also, you know, I had a um, I had a local pediatrician here um, in another class, and she said the mistake that people in the health science industry make is that they don't get the business side of it. So they find themselves as an employee, and they get cheated out of money because they haven't learned how to manage a business. And that's something that in dental school, you'll get great dental care, you'll get patient care, uh, great education on that. But she said a lot of doctors, especially female doctors and dentists, uh, and especially minorities are so excited to have a seat at the table. They let people take advantage of them because they don't have that business background. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and that's when you you have friends from different backgrounds and you have, you know, the the people who know business kind of help you out. I'm about my money all the way like when I got um, a contract for a job and I made sure that it was looked over by several people before signing anything because you're absolutely right like women have been known to have a they just want a seat at the table and taking the first offer that's given to you isn't always the unless it's like an amazing offer but like women have been known to be the ones to never negotiate never negotiate a contract never negotiate what they pay they're just like okay I'm going to pay you 150,000 and you just 
take it like, oh, okay, great. It's a job. It's an experience. And men commendably don't do the same. It's like, okay, well, you said 150. I know there's a room for 170 in the budget because I'm bringing X, Y, and Z to the table. So as women, I definitely encourage you, like we, we're past that point. We, we're already at the table. Like yeah, we cool. need, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and I know, you know, we had Dr. Antoinette Lyles here in Jackson, but, but why are there, why is there such a need for black female, uh, black females in the dental field, even in the, uh, in the dental hygienist and dental assistant uh, areas? Um, I think, this job is like so much bigger than us. And there's so many like little girls out there watching you, even where you are now, even like when you're in high school, when you get to college, when you like, there are little girls that want to be you and that like have never seen certain people in certain positions. So I think it's important for us to be in these positions of power and just, it's also, I think we're some of the most relatable people. Like, I see patients come in and talk to some of my classmates or just, you know, different people in different way. And just, it's interesting because as a black woman, certain people just don't cross you in that way. <laughs> I'm just like, um, excuse me, well, who are we talking? Because you can leave. And like other people are just, you know, not really used to that. And I think just being able to like relate to your patients and, you know, kind of like relax a little bit. You don't have to have like the stiff like person like, oh, I'm going to the doctor's office. This is very uncomfortable. I think we really provide like a new level of just flavor to the role, if anything. Like I'm professional, I'm very smart. I have, you know, these degrees, but I can also, you know, you can get read and you can, you know, I show up, I'm popping half the time. Like we, we create that type of diversity. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great point, you know, because uh, it, it is at the end of the day, it is about uh, it, it is a business. So, you know, customers have to trust you and have to relate to you. Um, mm -hmm. some of their uh, this is from William Walker. And he mm -hmm. uh, what made you want to get into dentistry? Um, so I kind of talked about a little bit of that at the beginning. That was like the early the early phases. Um, but I'm also kind of artsy at heart. Like I'm really good with doing stuff with my hands. And I'm also very interested just in medicine. Like I love the way that people like in dentistry, like we can diagnose a lot of healthcare problems. And I really love healthcare, which is why I have my other degree, but in keeping people healthy, like we can diagnose cancers from the mouth. We can diagnose you know, STDs and everything else and, you know, blood disorders. And if you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, like we can kind of all those things manifest in the mouth. And then we are also like head and neck specialists. So we can do a lot more outside of the scope of the mouth. And yeah, um, cleaning is important, but there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that was kind of like the driving force, just getting to combine medicine and art and you know i've enjoyed that a lot uh this is from jamaria mother jamaria merriweathers and he uh, and this is a good a good question because you talked about where you went to school but he wants to know how long it took uh, uh how long in school were you for all this uh, it's <laughs> a long time so i am i guess it'll be a total of 10 years wow and you don't have to do 10 years. You can do eight, but it's a minimum of eight for dentistry. Yeah, it's four years of undergrad and then uh, four years of dental school. And then if you decide to specialize after that, that could be an, an additional three to four years. Yeah. And, and, and right before you got on, we watched another uh, video of Dr. Webb in San Antonio. who's a, mm -hmm. uh, a black. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he was talking about, you know, a lot of people say they want to do this because they want to make a lot of money, but they have no idea how long it actually takes. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're living proof that it could happen, but that's also a reality to know no matter what color you are, it's going to take a while to get there. Oh, it's going to take, it's yeah. going to take a while. It's going to take a while and a lot of money. Yeah. Um, this is Jada Green and she asked, what are some things that you face in dentistry that you like and things you don't like? Things I face in dentistry that I, um, things I don't like right now is lab work, <laughs> like being, um, being in dental school. I don't know if it's, they say it's them trying to teach you, you know, how things go. And my dental school in particular is like very hands-on with lab work. 
that is probably one of my least favorite things. And in real life, it won't, I mean, you can be as hands-on or hands-off as you want to be. And I don't want to be hands-on with it at all. I want to check the work and say, this looks good and let the lab kind of handle making those things. Um, so I think that's one of the my least favorite things. And I also, it's funny because I really hate drool. I hate spit. I hate drool. I don't know how this, you know, how I ended up in this because I think a lot of stuff is gross. And I'm just like, oh, he's drooling. Like even my godchildren, I'm like, as they were babies, I'm like, oh, it's drooling. Like take the baby. But now I think you just really learn to look past that and you kind of get over it. Like some people have very interesting things going on in the mouth. And when you turn on the lens of like, I'm your medical professional, like I'm your doctor, it kind of changes things. So I think those are like the hardest things, like seeing some crazy stuff in somebody's mouth. And it's like, no, you need to call 911. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, and before we got on, we also, we also talked about this, about um, the scientific uh, knowledge is very important, but this this field takes people skills, no matter what position you're in. You know, you have Absolutely. to deal with people. And this is from Traverius Carson. And he asked, do you ever get upset with annoying patients? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I have a lot of patience with people because... Your, your mouth is a very sensitive area and it's a sensitive topic and people go through so much, you know, just not having teeth alone. Like imagine yourself not being able to walk down the street with the teeth that you have or just, you know, not having the smile that you like. Like it really changes people's lives and some people are like very um, touchy about it as they should be. Um, but it's, it's a process. Like I've had some patients kind of get very, impatient about things I've had them um yeah one of my patients actually the other day he is definitely a trip and he kind of he gets on everybody's case in there he's like this doctor is trash and this doctor doesn't know what they're talking about and he every time I leave his little operatory he's up checking my work in the like the like just he, oh he's into everything wow like, this isn't good this isn't saying I'm like it's not supposed to stop touching it <laughs> sit down and stop touching and the last time he did that um there I think he learned to not play with me that day because he was like well I'll just if this isn't gonna be right it's not supposed to be right it was like a, the pre-model to like what he was getting he's like if this isn't gonna be right then I, you know what I'm just gonna leave and I was like bye <laughs> and he's like well wait well um I just and he threw his little fit there and I was like you can leave I'll see you next time I'll schedule you when I you know when I am in the mood and he called me back later that day and apologized because he knew he was acting a fool. And we've been, I have to like check him certain times in a point like, look, this looks good. I did a wonderful job. This is what we're going to get. And the other doctors, the specialists will come over and like, she did a phenomenal job on this. So I definitely, it's definitely people that will um, try you. And I think as long as you stand your ground and that's not just patients like the older doctors that come around as well will definitely try you until they know that you're not the one or the two uh, in a respectful way of yeah. course <laughs> uh, and this is Jacayla page and she asked how many patients do you get a year a I'm, I'm year sorry. how many pages you get in a day i'm sorry i can't read oh <laughs> i'm like a year i don't know um at school we can only do three appointments oh uh, sometimes you can squeeze in a little extra but at school, they usually want you to see three a hold day. On, on uh -huh. Sorry, I got buzzed by the office. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, at school, we usually see three a day. And then, like, we have three appointment slots. And then, I guess, like, on a day to day in real life, you can see anywhere from like six to 10 a day. And 10 is like working extremely hard. <laughs> All right, this is uh, uh, from Selena Johnson. And she said, when you were in school to be a dentist, what were the most stressful moments? Um, most stressful moments. I think every year has like a different type of stress and every year has like a new stress. Um, so I guess the stress, I can go through each year and tell you stressful moments. I think 
first year, it was just being adjusted to being in a, a new city. And Boston is like a city that like no, people don't mostly drive. You're taking public transportation. So, and it gets extremely cold. Oh, yeah. So that just that it, it's already cold out. So um, like it's getting there already. Um, but that was an adjustment. So I think first year was an adjustment. I had already had my master's in biomedical science. So the classes weren't like crazy outside of biochemistry. That one was annoying. But outside of that, the classes felt doable to me. Certain people like were kind of struggling in some just the transition. Second year, on the first week of second year, I went to the office. We call it 15 floors, the top floor in the dental building. It's like a very like high rise building. Um, because in the cities we built up and not like out so like it's not like a lot of like space for things everything is like very high i went to the office like my <laughs> like first week of second year and i was like you know what this is not for me just give me my money back i don't i'm not in the mood for this this is absolutely ridiculous i can't do it <laughs> they were like and show and I had worked so closely like with administration already with my roles at school and they were like and show go back to go just take a breather and I was like no give me my money back please like I I want no more parts in this like this is absolutely nuts and I think it was just the the pace of everything they always use the analogy like it's like drinking water from a fire hydrant so there's so many things coming at you there's regular classes that you have to study for and studying is not an option you're not going to come in there and just ace something like you've been able to kind of finesse your way through high school um so like we're studying for hours a day we're doing projects for and projects takes they take hours so like you can redo a project maybe like five or six times like because it has to be right so don't think you'll just do it once and then it's just going to be what it's supposed to be um on top of that, I had meetings all the time because of the positions that I held at school. And then just like regular workshops and meetings and this and that and community survey, like it's just, it's so much kind of coming at you that it's just like, that's the overwhelming part about second year, third year, just getting into clinic and like seeing my own patients and kind of like getting used to like the you know, the software that we use. And then now fourth year, um, I'm pretty much chilling. Um, I've passed my, <laughs> both of my boards. Um, and now it's, I think the stress of fourth year is just like licensing exams. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, I, know, I know Tufts University has a partnership with Mississippi College, but is that the mm -hmm. reason you chose to go to Tufts? Because I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of other great dental schools in America. Yeah, so I interviewed and got accepted to some other dental schools, but I chose Tufts because I like the amount of Black people that were going to be there. Like at UNLV, at my home school, I would have been the one Black person at the school. And I'm thankful that I did that because this last year with the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter and all the stuff with George Floyd, like, I thank God every day that I made the decision I made because I had like the mental support here from my, my classmates and from, because it's now like they're increasing in number of black students every year, but like my year was an or originally like the largest amount of black people. So like out of, or people that identify as black, cause it's not all, I like to call them regular black, which is totally <laughs> and incorrect. But um, like there's certain people from like Africa that aren't like, you know, not Nigerian or, you know, Kenyan, but like the other people that are like Arabic or, you know, but they also like on their applications identified as black. So you'll kind of run into that too. But it was important for me to have community. And when I came to Tufts, like I felt that and like with my interview process, um, but I did get into my home school and another school and I just, you know, this is where I kind of felt most at home, like with the people. Yeah. And, and I know Mississippi college had a, had a big hand in that. And, uh, and that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't think people realize the, uh, the, the talent of the faculty at Mississippi college. And I think for any people, anybody watching now or watching later here, um, if you're wanting to get into the medical field in any, any shape, form or fashion, Mississippi college is really something you need to look at. And it's right down the road. It's Mississippi College is a beast. Yes. A beast. Like, when did I graduate? 
three, four years ago. And it like literally still helps me on board exams today. Like there's certain stuff that I just know that are so ingrained in me from Mississippi College that like I didn't, I, I love my undergrad, love, 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 won't take anything away from it, but I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for Mississippi College. Yeah. Like, yeah. man. So the, the education there is phenomenal. And I'm like, dang, why didn't I know about this in undergrad? Because I could have like hit the two birds with one stone because they're like, they're teaching you what you need to know. Like those undergrad students are amazing. I was so impressed with them. And they definitely, they took class with us, the graduate students. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. And, and that's, a, that's the thing, you know, if, if you're wanting to get in, in, into this field, it's not, you know, something you can halfway do. You know, Dr. Mm-hmm. Whitman said that it's it's something you have you know you got to be a hundred percent. Now, obviously, there's there's opportunities there, but the, uh, the you number one, you got to have become from a great program, and number two, you got to knock the top out of it. Um, yep. And I'm and we're, we're almost out of time, uh, and they had some great questions, and, and we thank you so much for joining us uh, all the way from the other side of the country and, and your busy schedule uh, this morning. Um, but I, I ask every speaker this, um, like everybody else in this room, you grew up black in America. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, you grew up in a big city, but you still grown up black in America and you're mm-hmm. facing obstacles now that they are going to face, whether they like them or not. And I say yeah. all the time, it's not right and it's not fair, but we all know it's true. So even if they have no desire to ever get into health science, mm-hmm. uh, they have no desire to ever get an advanced degree. How can they overcome mm-hmm. the same obstacles that you faced the, when they come their way as they get older? Ooh. Um, I think just knowing that you deserve to be here, knowing who you are and whose you are, like I wouldn't be anywhere without God. So like, I can't even say that any of this is like, just, you know, I owe any of this to myself. I owe any of this to society, like keep God first and not to, you know, get all extra spiritual on you, but like man can't take away from you what like God has meant for you. So if something is like written into your life and you're supposed to be somewhere, then nobody else on this planet can take that away from you. Um, And just, you know, be strategic about what you do. Don't be an easy target to like, you know, get your life thrown away. Don't, you know, I don't know if you guys like watched the Central Park Five story, but that like really, really messed me up. And just, you know, imagining my cousins in that situation and some of my cousins and family members have been in those situations. So like that, it's on Netflix still. That's a great- Yeah, like being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm like, oh my God, if I have sons, they have to stay home. Like being in those large groups of young boys and a son that kind of hang out around my apartment. I'm like, stuff comes up missing around here. Y'all know y'all are the first target. And they're going to shoot first and ask later. And it's just really, really important to kind of keep yourself in those safe environments, keep yourself involved. If there's sports there, if there are like anything that you can be involved with, be involved with it. Like don't get into the riffraff. I promise you, it won't get you anywhere. The people you have to cut off, I don't care if you knew, I don't care if you knew Bubba since you were six years old. If he is not going or she is not going where you're trying to go, then you sometimes you have to leave those people where they're at. And I've had to leave a lot of people. And it doesn't mean that any love is lost. It just means you're not getting me to where I have to go. And it it is what it is. Family members, uh, friends, anybody. Yeah, I I, I agree. I think it's good for them to hear it from somebody else besides me because I I think they think I'm making stuff up sometimes. (laughs) Um, uh, But before we go, make make sure you plug your YouTube channel. You know, I I think you're a great you're a great subscription and a and a great IG follow. So why don't you uh, hit us with your uh, hit us with your YouTube channel? Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is a little crazy sometimes, so it's definitely you're not going to always see Dr. Tucker on there. But um, it's hit the jackpot underscore five and my youtube is also hit the jackpot and you can go to my youtube from my instagram and anytime you guys like have questions about anything i know you guys are what is a ninth grade you said yeah this is an all ninth graders in here okay yeah but it's not too it's never too early to start thinking about like what you want to do and go to those different offices and like just see what they do because sometimes you don't know you might think that you want to do something you're like oh this is trash like this is whack this is not a life i want to live so it's important to just as early as you can before you even pick a college, before you pick a major, before you do any of that, like go out into these professions. You think you want to go and be an engineer, find one. 
Like, you think you want to be a doctor, go volunteer in the hospital, like find these people because they're out there and you guys have, you know, so many black people in Jackson that you can kind of look up to and go after. So and make connections with. Yeah. It, but still, you're a great example for uh, all of our young people, especially our our young ladies and, and I, and I, um, you have some great stuff for us today. And we, again, we thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, of I'll, see, I'll see you in a few weeks when you join our, our entrepreneurship class to talk yes, about yes. Okay. looking forward to that one as well. Um, but keep doing what you're doing and, uh, and thanks so much. And I will talk to you very soon, my friend. All right. Thank you. Bye guys. Yeah. <laughs>